All right, we're live. Simon, welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, so I thought we might start, we'll get into your background in a bit, but you just did Madrid, Hirox Madrid at the weekend, open and pro. Can you tell us a bit about that? How are you feeling now? You know what? I'm feeling really good. I had absolutely no... I'm obviously during the race. It was it was uh, the, the second race, especially the second half of the pro. I was just running through quicksand and that was it. But um, actually, after after the race, actually no no issues at all. Muscles are all fine. Felt felt really uh, really good. Yeah. Nice, nice. So open. So well, sorry, we should start. How old are you? Uh, fifty three. Fifty three. Right, and you're yeah. the you're the fifty to fifty four age group world champion. In high rocks, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Nice. So, uh, so at the weekends in in the open, you did a, a one hundred one, yeah, one hundred one thirty six, which was ten seconds outside of the open record. Open world, yeah. which, which you already hold, yeah, yeah, which I already hold, yeah. And I was, I was kind of basically spurred on by there's there's two really good guys in our age group. One that's just come up called Danny Sevilla, and he's like a Spanish ox, fast as anything, strong. Strong as anything. I know he's so strong because he deadlifted a bath for me over my uh, balcony in the, the place in I've got in uh, in Marbella. Uh, we had to get up three floors on the outside of the house because I did, didn't realise it was 200 kilo bath. Anyway, um, <laughs> he, he was in my heat and it's the first time racing against him. And there's Guy Ismail Tao, who was, who's the former open world record holder, who's a pro world record holder up from San Sebastian. And he was running earlier on. So I was like, right, okay, I've got to make sure I go as fast as I can here. Um, so yeah, so I got it was a good, it was a good enough time, but so much room for improvement. Was, really? Yeah, I was, I was well, wall balls. I had fifty no reps on wall balls, which I put down to. I, I ended up, I think I've been training with nine kg and take training pro pretty much all the time, which is which is great because then it's. You know, you, you then come to the open and then it's a lot lighter and kind of easier. The problem with the wall ball light, it doesn't take you down the right depth. I was probably on my toes rather than my heels. My legs probably not wider, wide enough. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking I was getting down, cause, which is when I had put my knees to my, uh, sorry, my elbows to my knees. That usually means I'm breaking parallel. But I was obviously tilted forward and the lighter ball. And I was just pumped out loads of wall balls for no reason, really. So what was your wall ball time? Do you know? It was something like 420 something, which funny enough, it is was about only 15 seconds slower than I did in the Malaga when I had the the record. Wow. So but that was my second race. So um yeah, there was I've made probably lots of improvement, but then I went and went back a few steps on certain things. Right. It's, 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 if you if you know you've got time in the locker for for a, a future world record, it must feel nice at least. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I kind of, I love Hyrox for the fact you can analyse all the sectors and what you've done. So running wise, I was a minute faster in Madrid on the Open than, than Malaga. Um, my fastest lap was exactly the same. It was like 3.54, taking out the first and the eighth. Um, but I was quicker. I wasn't had, didn't have so many in the four to four ten range, so I was a minute faster there. A um, couple of things perched the same. The ergs, the which I'm not that that good on. Um, the sled push was a little bit less, a little bit better on the farmer's carry. There's a you know move, movement here and there. But burpee ball jumps. I've got to try and I've got to. Embrace my inner frog or something like Hunter does. <laughs> he, he just flies through that, and I need I need to get that plyo going to improve that time. But yeah. there's there's definitely some more, definitely a lot more room for improvement, especially obviously wall balls. Yeah. And then so so that was open, and then you went and did the pro race. How, how much late was that? It worked out an hour and a hour and forty because I obviously did a fairly good time, a good time. So. Um, yeah, an hour and forty later, which makes fuel in a a bit of a mare, really. Um, and, and I felt it, you know, going into the pro, I felt really good for the first minute. It was all good, you know, because they really <laughs> the lights go down. I was in the first heat, you know. So John wins in there. I follow on Instagram, and he does some great content and that. And you know, he's flo flown off. 
I've gone and said, well, I'm going to hang at the back anyway. And then that's the last I saw of, of those guys. Um, yeah, I felt good for a minute. And then it was just it was just a bit of a grind. Still, it's still got a very solid time. One one thirteen in the pro is, is you know, no, no shame in that at all. Yeah, and no, I think it's like the fifteenth fastest of all, all time. Um, yeah, I was hoping in my mind I was like, all right, if I can first time it's trying to get through two races. Next one is trying to win both, which I knew I was capable of, but I hadn't been against Danny before, so I didn't know how, how that was going to go. And then third one, can I get near the the records because in Manchester I got oh, it's like one hundred nine fifty something, um, and that was with a one minute penalty um, for going going in the out gate, my sense of direction, um, and that would have been a pro record. But um, so I was hoping to get near nearer that. But to be honest, <laughs> after that first minute of the race, I just want to finish the race. That's it. <laughs> Do you think? Um... Like it, you, you've recovered pretty well, it sounds like. Whereas, to be honest, like I'm just like wiped out after doing one race. Do you feel like the, I ideally the race would be longer to suit your abilities, or or, or not? No, honestly, I, I, yeah, no longer. Thanks. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. Some like James Kelly want to make oh, make it like double or yeah. treble. No, no, no. It's, it's it's just the right. It's just the right length. Um, to be honest, it's perfect. Obviously, the thing is just the doing the the two. I think open once once you've moved into kind of doing some pros, then open becomes a real breeze. It's like, it's almost like a train. I shouldn't say it's like, kind of like a training run in a way. Um, that's why I wanted to do the open and pro. I, I kind of got got the idea from two places. From listening to your podcast in February when that crazy guy did four in Glasgow. Oh, yeah, Joel Enoch. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, how do you... At the time, I kind of thought, oh, I've well, always done four, so kind of okay. And then when you do a, any multiple, uh, you know, trying to do another two, that would just be off the charts. So, you know, fair play to Joel, that was incredible. And then a, a friend of mine from Spartan, um, Mohammed Jafar, he was uh, did the event over in Dubai. And he did an open and a, and a pro. Um, had about... Three, four hours rest in between. Um, but I kind of thought, man, if he can do it, then, then why not give it a go? I've got a, I'm coming to Madrid anyway, why not you know book another book another one? Nice. And just like, give yourself a, a test, you know. Yeah. And the next the next pro race you do now might, might feel easy when you're doing it on fresh legs. Yeah, well that, that that's that's <laughs> I think it will, for sure. <laughs> um all right, so tell us um tell us a bit about your background. So you live uh, so you're in you're in Spain at the moment. You you live in Spain. Uh, yeah, tell us a bit about your situation. I'm, yeah, I kind of live between Spain and uh, Glasgow. So Marbella in in uh, the south of Spain, and uh, Glasgow in Scotland. So um, basically, we moved, we moved back. Me and my wife uh, and my little daughter, three year old, moved back from Hong Kong uh, in 2020, and I got a place in Glasgow. My wife's half Scottish, half Spanish, which is a a fiery combination. <laughs> My daughter's got that fiery combination as well. Um, and yes, we we got a place in, in Glasgow, which is a, just a fantastic city. Honestly, I lived in London beforehand. It's just lovely up in Glasgow. Very easy. And then we ended up buying a place in, in, in Marbella because near where she, she grew up. Okay. It's just a little Spanish townhouse, 100 metres from the beach. There's a lot, you know, on the beach, there's all these calisthenics um setups and you know, bars and all that kind of stuff and, and obviously you've got the water a great place to run so yeah we try and get over the intention is to to move over uh to to spain um probably next year all right and then so sporting background wise what were you what were you doing up to the point that you discovered high rocks well just interesting. So, so i kind of grew up doing team sports uh, football um a lot and um, yeah, i got up to County level, um, playing for Suffolk and Essex and county level. And a few of my friends went on. They they went and played for Ipswich and other well, my team I support. Um, and I was like, I kind of wondered what happened because I because I, I played in goal. Um, and I was always kind of touted all the future and goalkeeper and all this kind of stuff when you're well, you're nine or ten, right? That's what they're kind of saying. Um, but yeah, I found out at the age of 40 while tiling a bathroom, um, kind of really awkward spot as well. I'm, 
on the phone to my mum. Um, and she said the Ipswich Scouts actually came looking, but she decided it wasn't the right career for me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thanks, Mum. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I got in team sports and then I, I moved to, did a little bit of running before, but when I, when I went to Hong Kong, you either go two ways in Hong Kong. I worked in finance. You either kind of go two ways. You can go down a rabbit hole and drink like crazy and it's a bit of a party place. Or you can, it's a, it's a big outside. It's great weather. You can get, get fit. Um, so I kind of went down a fitness route, but the big change for me was a couple of things. Um, finding Spartan actually it was a, it was a, my, my training went from a, like a weight and running kind of separate to a lot real functional, um, fitness that made a big difference. And then I, um, Lazara, my wife, um, was vegan. And now we go between vegan, vegetarian, we eat some fish and stuff now. Um, and I kind of followed along with what uh, she did. Not, you know, no uh, vegan activism reason or anything like that. I just just thought, okay, food was tasting really good. I'll, I'll do that. And that just made a big difference. The diet changed because I was eating you know, lots of cheese, you know, drinking too too much still then and then uh, there's a pack of biscuits there that I'd polish those off so it's kind of like fat fit you know um and that made a big difference uh to me and, and so yeah Spartan I got into Spartan in Hong Kong and got to travel with that from Malaysia Singapore um went off to what, a, what age were you at this point where you discovered Spartan it was the, 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 the things all quite quite late really because I went over to 2010 I went to Hong Kong I was there for 10, 10 years, so I was 40 at that that stage. Okay. So and that's the that's a little bit of a kind of a I wish I found all these things earlier, but they probably weren't around as in in the the sense of the the, the global uh, reach that they have there now. Um so yeah, it's all quite quite late in the day. You know, if you kind of started earlier, then then it'd be good. You know, so try, you know, the best will in the world. I, that's why I love the age group categories. Trying to compete with some twenty-year-old, um, it's it's always going to be difficult head to head. But you know, with the age group categories, it makes it a lot uh, better. So I, now I, I try, you know, try and compete against the younger ones to try and prove I can get you know near them. But yeah, so we went Spartan all over the. Went to Iceland for the World Championships there. Went to Hawaii, did races there. Um, and then came back to UK and did the UK series last year, the first time I had the UK series, and I'd, I'd won the UK series. And, and then Hyrox came along. I was like, wow, this is what a gap in the market. And it's, you know, some things you don't realise are such a big gap in the market until they're, they're there, right? Yeah. Nobody, no, not everyone wants to run around a field in, in the cold and wet sometimes doing Spartan obstacle course. Not everyone wants to do Olympic lifting and all the movement types of of CrossFit, and this is just perfect. This is just such a great community, unbelievable atmosphere in the in the venues. So the yeah, the first one was in Glasgow in February this year. That I did, okay. did and I'm completely hooked on it now. Going back to um, when you first started doing Spartan, were you did you find like you were fairly instantly good at it? I, I, it was, for me, it was actually trying to find it. I, the first race I did, I did an open. So that, oh, I'll just go an open. I won't go in elite or age group. And then you find it, you have a typical thing in Hong Kong where the, a lot of people enter an event, not necessarily to compete in the event, but to do the event. So they walk it. So I remember doing the first half marathon I did over there. And all these people are there. You get to the one kilometer mark and they're all taking selfies. You know, next to the one kilometre mark, going, oh, look, look, look. And so, <laughs> I found it, it was the same in Spartan. You ended up with just a whole load of people in front of you. So first race was open. Oh, God, right, okay, let, let's switch to elite then. And I went into elite, and then you start at the front of the field. It's great. I think I finished, like, 20th or something like that. And then, oh, right, well, let's go for age groups. And then found found the age groups thing. So I, I got into it and, yeah, found... The age group suited really well. Also, at the time, actually, there was a, another big change that um, I left my job in finance, um, cartwheeling out of the office, to be honest, because it was just 
you know, being, you know, you, you don't think you feel like you do anything kind of tangible, right? So fitness became a real big thing for me. And, and I, um, I retrained as a personal trainer and then, um, I did the, the Spartan, uh, course I did group training as well, did, uh, animal flow, TRX, all these things, uh, and joined a gym in, in Hong Kong in Discovery Bay where we lived. Um, and that, that was just fantastic because you've got a whole beach area and paddocks out the back and I, I make all these obstacles. So I made Olympus wall, uh, out of an old horse stable, um, you know, make Z, Z, Z balls, all these like, really cool like, obstacles for the kids as well. We did a lot of kids training and stuff on the beach as well. Um, so that that was that that kind of change happened, and yeah, it made a big uh, yeah big difference in the way I kind of oh God, I've lost myself now. Sorry, <laughs> I've completely lost what I was thinking by training thought. So are, are, you, are you are you still doing like PT and coaching and group training and things like that? Well, I haven't. So I haven't done the um, uh, that for a couple of years because with Santia and daughter coming along, uh, I said let, let, let's just concentrate on her because. When I was in Hong Kong uh, before, my older daughter Ruby is thirteen now. I didn't get so much time with her all the weekends, but then during the week you didn't get really much time. So, um, well, you know what? Let, let's just concentrate on her. And, and my wife is always she's written a book and she's starting off her business. Uh, so I'll look after like Santia. Uh, so yeah, it, it, it just kind of worked nicely that that way. I could dedicate that that time, but I'll go back in into it because. Honestly, from a point of view of of um, job satisfaction, it's it's, it's great. It's yeah. really good working one on one with people. That is a lot about not necessarily obviously you want to know the science of it all and the movement patterns and everything. It's a lot about the psychology of how to to train someone, right? Mm -hmm. How to do the right thing. And funny enough, in so in Hong Kong, you get a lot of trainers where I mean, people pay really good money to basically hold their iPhone while they pump out a couple of reps. And then take their iPhone back and message message you <laughs> up. Or you get the other type where they'll actually do their workout. So the trainer will do their workout and then you've got to follow along kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed it. So I'll, I'll go back into it um, for sure, probably next year. Okay. Where do you think you're, like, going back, like, you started Spartan in, when you were around 40, obviously pretty decent at that and you're fairly incredible at high rocks. But you were only a goalkeeper, you know, like when when you were younger. Did did you, did, did your endurance background, like your endurance abilities, come from anywhere that that you can think of? Well, no, <laughs> not really. Um, I'm trying to think. Yes, I was a goalkeeper, and then I did some dragon boats in Hong Kong. No, there, there's no necessary background. To be honest, I really don't like running. It's, it's something that um, I've kind of grown grown into. I think more to kind of. Yeah, yeah, prove others wrong that you you can get better at things. You don't not necessarily have to be necessarily the best at them, but you can just um, from ability wise or background wise that you can you can train your body into it. And I started doing more running in Hong Kong. You can only do it kind of certain times a year because it's too hot during the main summer. So I started running marathons and 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 ten k. So and the whole aim was to get a sub forty. Uh, 10k which took like seven uh, attempts all kinds of of, <laughs> of issues um like you know, having a few drinks the night before one of the races yeah. leaving your your bib at the in, in the apartment and then realizing when you're going to get on the ferry or you haven't got it and then you got to run 250 meters right up a hill to get it and then you know, messed up um but yeah so that there was no background for the endurance i think that i got decent mental toughness i think you a lot of the the mental strategies that i listened to at, um uh george and, and with joseph and harry are on your on your mm -hmm. podcast you know they just like it really really helped because you you know you, you think overcome and become i think was one of uh, george's ones george yeah, yeah. and so good you, you, you gives you that ability right just to let's let's stick with this task and and do it and then you can get get better but yeah, there's no background for the endurance at all. <laughs> yeah, you, you sent me uh, some pictures yesterday, and, and one of those was like your. I think you just done a, a 50 minute 10 k, uh, and like that was the first sub 40 minute actually. Yeah. Right, right, right. So, so oh, that oh, that was the 40 minutes. 
Yeah, that was a 40 minute one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, so that was kind of the fat fit. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like body wise, you've, you've you've transformed a lot since then, haven't you? Yeah, and I think I'm say diet, mentally, relationships, and all that, uh, work. You know, stress of, of work. Um, yeah. I went I subsequently went for a divorce at the same time as well, and then um, later later remarried to Lazara, and uh, and then the yeah, just just so much change that that went on that I was training beforehand, but I wasn't training the right way. Yeah. And I wasn't the right way, and I wasn't mentally the right way. No. So, yeah. And you just said, I was going to get to this later anyway, but you touched on the, like the mindset side of things and like overcome and become. And you know, is there is there anything else that you use like in a race when when things are getting really hard? Where where does your mind go? Well, it's funny. It's funny. So I, it, you know, in the pro race, I tried using um, the the smile one that oh, yeah. Joseph did. And which worked for about five seconds in the uh, in the pro. I kept on trying it and trying it. Um, it does, I mean, it does work. I know that, but it, yeah, at that point, I was I was kind of beyond it. Normally, you know, what, I, I think of I've got this thing going in front of my head. Team LSR, which is Lazara, Santia, Ruby, who like the three crazy women in my life. Um, and I kind of just think about them, and it drives you on because that's a big that's a big thing of for me of getting fit and maintaining the fitness is like, I've got a three-year-old at 53 and, you know, and there's no, she's a dynamo, absolute dynamo. I mean, last night, 11.30, she was still up um, and she hadn't had a nap all day. She'd been up from 8.15 and running around, honestly running around the whole, the whole day. So I get to train three days a week when she's at nursery and the other two days I'm looking after her. It was almost as if, which ones are the rest days? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Go to the gym for a rest. Yeah. 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 Um, that, that smile, like, tactic that, that, that Josephine talks about. And I, I know, like, Kipchoge uses that, I think, doesn't he? And I, I've been trying, funnily enough, in the in the gym this week on the treadmills. And, like, you find, like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to smile. And then five seconds later, you find, like, you're not smiling again. It, it almost needs that constant reminder to, to do yeah. it, you know. It's, um, but yeah. I think it, I think it probably can help if you if you can. If you can I, I think, it. It, yeah, it definitely. And, and there's a couple of times I was really um, really fortunate. A few of the, the the people I know were actually from Spartan um, were were there in the in the crowd on the the, the pro race. And it's quite late in the in the day. And I kept on you know hearing um, some of them like cheering cheering us on. So that, that gives you a big lift, and then it kind of makes you inner you know smile when you, when you spot them. You smile at them, and you, so it does have that effect. Um, I just needed a lot more of them all around the track. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, we, if we talk about your training, like you just mentioned, like training, are you training more than three times a week, or is that like that, I, that's I, that's that's all you do? I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I I'd like to. Um, I do. Yeah, I, I, when when we go to my bed to to, to today, the, what we can do? Cause I'm gonna start getting up earlier, getting up before everyone else again. Which it, which it, which here is a, in Spain is a lot easier than in Glasgow and Scotland when it's uh, coming into autumn. Right? Uh, get up early, get out for a run along the the seafront, and, and and do that. Get that long longer running. I don't do enough zone two. You know, it's so much about zone zone two, and I I don't get a chance to actually really put that into practice. So I get to train you know, three days a week, which normally will be a run and a a gym session depending and the problem I've got at the moment I'm kind of between Spartan and High Rocks and so this in a couple of weeks time there's a, a Spartan race it'll be like my last one um, so I can't do both you don't get an off season no. you know, everyone's been in this uh, off season for High Rocks and building a base and strength and doing all these things and I'm kind of caught between two a little bit between two worlds so now I'm just going to concentrate on the, on the High Rocks and uh, but yeah, training wise, I normally do some hill repeats or hill circuits on the on the Monday, which I find great for for both. Um, but really good for high rocks to kind of like test your ability once you get to the top to actually then push on and run properly. Uh, and then get to the gym, do yeah, probably a couple of hour session, maybe between just a whole different types of AMRA. Yeah, kind of. I, I tend to listen to a body, see how I how I'm going, and then figure out what to do on that on that particular day and then on um, the 
yeah, so then on, on, on a Wednesday, I may do a, a 10K, a faster 10K, and a gym session on a, on a Friday, kind of have a bit of an easier glide with running and then with some sprints within that, and then the gym session again. <laughs> okay, and the gym session is you're working on just like strength. Uh, yeah, as if a few, yeah that, that's the thing that I've been lacking a bit to actually phys- to work on just specifically strength. So I've only got a certain amount of time. And there's other things to do <laughs> as well, you know. Um, so I would tend to work on what I've been working on recently is just specifically, right, let's let's work on wobbles, <laughs> which, which obviously backfired a little bit. Um, but you know, working on for me the ergs, honestly, I, I I must be the slowest in the in the in the ergs. Um I've got at the gym, we've got a uh I belong to they've got an origin ski erg, which gives me a way better time. <laughs> 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 so I've got to like find that adaption between the, the two. Um, so my erg times are okay, it's slightly better, but it's still like four twenty on the ski erg. Whereas if I'm in the gym, then it'll be like a three forty. So I know there's some of the, some of the wherever the cutoff is when you run in and run out. I guess there's a bit of that. Um, but yeah, I've been concentrating on on those, and then a few things uh, like with the running. Just need to get that that faster pace. So uh, James Kelly put out a, a fantastic like benchmark kind of test where you do eight one kilometer runs on the on a treadmill at a pace that's really going to push you, but that you push you mentally and physically, but yeah. you hope you should should finish. Uh, um, yeah, varying um, rest in between. It's like forty five second for a, a pro a pro one, and I tried that. At, 16 half kilometers now I guess and and that was that was good so usually I'd run it on a treadmill at 15 so just been trying to work on getting that speed speed up um this is it's, it's impressive that you know like 101 in the open 109 or 110 in the in the pro at 53 and you're training three days a week that's like that's 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 a very low volume um for, for that sort of time, isn't it? It's, it's impressive, yeah, really. Yeah. You know, I think um, it's a bit of, actually, it's good. It's, it works quite nicely to have the rest days, you know, because my body gets a complete rest. Mm-hmm. Well, so apart from running around after Santa, but it, it gets a rest from the, the, the gym and the running, right? But on for, for a couple of days in the, uh, there. So for me, it works. I, ideally, I'd probably put another session in at the weekend, some of that. But yeah, I guess yeah. Compared to you know, listening to the the, the podcast and listening to what other people do, it is low low volume. Yeah, is it, it? It it probably is easy, or maybe a lot of people fall into that trap of training too often, so that then their hard days they can't go hard enough because they've gone too hard on their easy days. You know, and, yeah. and there's just too much volume in there. So by just having this like forced rest, um, I'm guessing that when you do train, it's like with real intent oh yeah it's proper it, 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 yeah it's full out it's funny because you get some really strange looks <laughs> people <laughs> at the gym they're on the you know the, the treadmills or the that, that uh elliptical and i'm running around with a 12k bag on there's a different type of resistance and going around and around and around in circles and i'm pushing the sled and all the rest of it so yeah you get some funny some funny looks but yeah it's always full on yeah Put yourself in the bin. What's the other? It's yeah, yeah. Some guy came and asked me if I was okay the other day in the gym because I was like groaning and moaning so much after some runs on the treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, let's let's talk about your uh, the World Championships in Manchester just gone. So you you won. Congrats. Yeah, it, it was a funny one. So I, I quite so the first race in Glasgow, I got the qualification spot. I went to sign up, and I, where's the open? category there's no open category you have to go pro uh so i called them up and i said look i'll just let me do i just need to do a gym session to see if i actually can push that sled and and pull the sled to to know whether i can even gonna be able to do this thing um and i could so okay well i'll i'll train for it uh and that was my basically that manchester one was the first pro race so i had no expectations at all but well, just one event it was fantastic that the arena in Manchester and watching the elite 15s is to me, that was a highlight. Oh, the thing, obviously winning it was, was great, but you know, Lauren Weeks was just phenomenal. 
Nice. Everyone expected Hunter to win. I, I, you know, and he is you know, just incredible. Um, and a really nice guy as well. But Lauren just she was just kept pushing, 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 and Megan couldn't get back her at all. And that was, that was great to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but you, for your race, um, you got a one minute penalty. And... Yeah. So I, I was, I was. It was a funny. I thought it's the first time you're like starting with the people you're competing against in the same wave. So I thought Ismail, who's a holder, um, would be, you know, starting my wave, and he wasn't. And I've seen him beforehand. I'm thinking, you know, what's going on? So I, I, I went off, flying around, and it turns out there were two, two waves. Very good. So we'd done the, I'd done the erg, and then I was coming around, running for like the second time, and I, I was, he's suddenly there. I'm thinking, what's going on? He started late or something. And then I went in the out gate. I was, oh, and as soon as I, as soon as I did it, I realized, Oh God, are they going to pick that up? Because in Hong Kong, the like a week or two before, I think someone on the podium had gone done the same yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think it'd been picked up on the chip or something, but someone had re- kind of re- seen a video or later. I wonder if anyone's going to. Re- so my head was all over the place. So then did the, it was in the sleds, sled push, and I couldn't even remember how well I'd done one, two, three, or four lengths. And I was just yeah, coming around and I saw oh like one minute penalty. Uh, oh geez, okay, right. I need to really, really push as hard as I can. And there's one guy, uh, Thilo, in um, in my heat, who finished second overall. And I thought I just need to get a lap on him, at least a lap on him, um, to, to stand a chance of getting on the on the podium. Um, so I just kind of pushed the running as as hard as I can. And yeah, it was a little bit all over the place for the kind of the, for that race. Thinking, oh, this is the world championships. You've kind of blown it. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, you, you obviously like pulled it together, t- stuck with it, I, it because it, things like that can just like mess with your head, and because there's t- there is so much to think about during a race, isn't there? Yeah, I think there's a lot, and and that was a good actually. This is the first time I, I used the the board, looking at the board as yeah. well as the laps, I can use the board as as well. Um, and and it it it, it, it makes a it, it does make a big difference. It takes a little bit of the thinking out there. Um, but yeah, I think that's what I like about Hard Rocks as well. You you are thinking, what lap am I on? What's my next exercise? Where is that next exercise located so I can get to it? And that's that's all. It's just a complete channel, you know, tunnel tunnel vision thing. And it's yeah, so much going on in the race. But that particular one, I just got to press as hard as I can. You know, I can't leave any second. I need to make sure I carry those. I think I went unbroken on the, the kettlebells, which I hadn't done before. And, um, go as fast as I could. I got to the finish line, and I, well, okay, I don't know, you know, where is everyone else? And then I've got the one minute penalty there. She's trying to work it out. So it was a little while before it it, it was confirmed. And Ismail, unfortunately, he he um, got a hamstring pull on the the lunges. You know, seventh station, he gets a hamstring pull, and he he had to pull out. Right. Um, I think he was a little bit behind, and then an American guy who ended up finished third. He was. We we're kind of like monitoring where he was in relation to he came in behind oh, sorry ahead of us on the wall balls but then left behind fortunately and uh, yeah got to bang the gong in the end nice <laughs> nice what's the uh, uh presumably you're planning to try and break that pro world record at some point have you got any races booked for that yeah i've, I've got I'm trying to think when the next actually the next pro race i've got booked is is actually the world championship because i i booked races when because the uk they sell out so quick right oh, yeah book the race up and try and work out yeah to go to it and, and then the early those early stages then i was doing open and i didn't even contemplate pro so i've got dublin as the next open one um i think the next pro one there's going to be a either glasgow or malaga malaga is just just been announced as a pre-registration in, in thinking March or April. Um and then whenever Glasgow hopefully will be announced soon. So I'll, I'll do one then. I've got doubles in in London um with, with Danny. But yeah the pro progress is a little bit off the way off. But the aim is to actually to try and break that open record to get that below the 101. Um and maybe a bit further, I don't know. It all depends. So that that's Dublin, the end of October. Only issue I've got is I'm in 
Spain now, <laughs> and I'm, I'm not. I haven't got a gym here, not nearby. So I basically got the beach gym. So wow. I'll, uh, I'll be training, training, running, and 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 using the calisthenic bar. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, what's a uh, like? You, you you mentioned you're running, like you're running training. Do you are you typically, um, like, is that road running? Or treadmill running? Do you, do you do you have a preference between those, or is it just based on on, on your circumstances? It's kind of based on circumstances. The road running is a lot a lot easier. You know, treadmill and stuff is 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 hard. I think you got to for high rocks, you got to do the treadmill and stuff in order to to train at a certain speed. Right, I, I want to be able to train at 16, 16 and a half kilometers an hour. Do that for five hundred meters, and then do something else to do that for a kilometer, etc. So I think you have you have to do that um, to get the, that kind of compromise running going. Yeah. Um, but I I'd, I'd, I'd wait for training training outdoors. Uh, it's, just, it's just easier. You don't you don't have to think about it so much. I mean, like running's that uh, someone said about the it's a series of arguments in your head between the part that wants to stop and the part that wants to <laughs> and says oh, well, okay let's carry on. Um, but it's a lot easier when you've got distraction outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was I meant to ask you when we were just talking about the, the the pro weights at the World Championships. I mean, obviously they've they've not obviously, but they've they've taken the pro weights away for the over sixties at the World Championships, so they they compete at the open weights. Are you like? What do you think about that? And do you think they they should lower that? And like, would you like to see it for your age group, for example? No, definitely not. I, I, no, I think it should be pro weights all the way. For me, I, I, I mean, it, it's it, for me. Like seven years time, I've had to push the, the the pro weights. Yeah, there's a lot of fit people in that can can do that. I guess there's a certain time when you, you know you you you're facing a battle at, at this age, and I guess from forty five or whatever it's onwards, where you lose your uh, a certain amount of muscle every every year, you lose that plier ability each time. So it does make sense to above a certain age to say, right, let's go to an open open weight. For me at the moment, I think it's just such a great challenge to do the the pro, you know, and, and then just fingers crossed that the carpet's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What's your uh, so you're doing doubles in London with yeah. Danny? That's a, you must have a pretty fast time you're hoping for there. Well, yeah, so Danny's the ex. Um, he won the world championship and doubles in in Vegas, right? Uh, the year. and then I think Chris's partner uh, uh, that he did that with is a bit younger. Then he's coming to this age group, so he, he said to me, "We were going to race in Malmo, but that got cancelled, unfortunately." Um, so yes, we'll try this in London, and yeah, he, he basically called me up because he, he said, "Right, I want to break the the record in in doubles." And I looked the other day; I think like fifty eight. 10 or something 5805 I've got written down yeah. so I mean I've never raced a double to know what how it works but obviously for things like sleds and that it, one push one it's, it's you're going to make up some good a good amount of time we're both similar um, running so it should be um, yeah that, the aim is to try and break that record here nice nice um, you you uh... You mentioned your plant-based diet, and 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 you feel like that's that's made you feel healthier uh, since, since doing it. Do you feel like? But then also, were you coming from a a bad diet to plant-based? Yeah, I was. Well, yeah, I was. I was generally eating. You know, I was eating a good balanced diet, I guess. Before, you know, it, as in, I was eating meat. I was eating vegetables. So, but the problem is all the the you know the chocolate, the biscuits, cheese. You know, it's just <laughs> I do in Hong Kong it's difficult to get a hold of cheese, right? And then my daughter, my uh my 13 year old lives in, in New Zealand. You go to New Zealand and you get these one kilo blocks of cheese. I come back with like 10, 10 blocks of one kilo of cheese. <laughs> and then you're working your way through them, and it's just like the just the worst thing for you. So yeah, I, I there was a combination definitely of, of things but no it, it, look, it doesn't work for everyone there's a lot of people uh, you know i know that, that they'll eat meat fish all kinds of different stuff i'd now eat uh, a lot more fish uh i'm 
Scotland, so you, as well, most of the time we're in, in Spain and you get good quality fish there. Um, but I, I just think, yeah, the diet has made a, a big difference. It, it then, you know, abs are made in the kitchen, right? That's, that's the whole the whole thing. Um, but cutting out, you know, eating a colourful, balanced you know, diet, you know, re- really, really helps. I think for recovery as well, I know it's a big difference in recovery. Um, before I'd, I'd, you know, you take a few days, you feel the, 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 the aches and the pains for, for quite a few days afterwards. And I don't, I did those two races and I'm, I'm running around the next, the next day. I could have done one the day after. Yeah, really. Brilliant. So it did do you, help. Do you like, are you like thinking about, am I getting enough protein and this, that and the other? Are you like analyzing oh, your macros and stuff? Well, I was initially. So for the first year or two, I had uh, one of those apps where you you analyze the you know the protein you're having because at that point it was mainly vegan uh, diet. Um, so I was definitely monitoring at, at that stage. And obviously, breakfast is no brainer because you got oats, chia seeds, all these kind of things you can put in. You get lots of protein. But outside of that, is then you have to think about it a little bit more. I mean, you find out there are a lot of protein in and, and a lot of uh, different. Well, yes, tofu and tempeh and all these kind of things. Now I don't have to think about it. I mean, I'm having more fish. I'm having some eggs. Yeah. You don't, you know, I, don't, I don't think about it as as much. For me, it's just trying to actually eat as enough for when I am training. You know, because that that's the problem I've got. I've got seventy between kind of 73, 74 kilos. So, and there's a balance between. You know, you, you don't want to get too muscly, not anywhere near that. I'm very kind of more lean, but so that you you lose some running pace, but then you want to be able to push that sled with a lot more ease. So it's a yeah. bit of a balance of trying to eat, eat the right way, but I don't have to think about the protein or that. I don't, yeah, it's, it's, it just kind of comes naturally now. Are you using protein powder or not? You know, I, I wasn't. And then Lazara, um, um, she was doing a, like a 30 day thing with one of these Arbon and one of these other things. And, and it got some great products. And one of them was like the protein powder. So I was putting a few scoops of that in, uh, in a shake or a, in, in the, in the cereal, but generally I don't, uh, I, I just prefer to just eat like, you know, especially like fish, salmon, and all it's just so easy to, to make and to eat. And there's loads of protein and omega three and sixes and all that kind of stuff, which helps your, your brain. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Nice. Um, What's the toughest thing you've done in sport? Oh god, the toughest thing. Open and pro at the weekend. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It probably uh it probably is because I think you know, I, I did the 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 Spartan up 24 hour world championships in Iceland, where you start you basically have to keep going for basically 24 hours and do an 11k loop in the cold and all the rest of it. And there's points to that where they were tough. But mainly that was walking around. You know, it's not, you're not running the whole time. I mean, it's an amazing race to be involved with. That's the one that John Alban could have won a million dollars in that particular race. Right. Um, but he pulled out because it just got too dangerous. Um, so there's, there's points of races where it's, uh, where things are tough. But yeah, that that in that second race, um, yeah, it's probably the toughest I can think of. Yeah. How about your best experience in sport? Oh, <laughs> you probably go back to a little kid or something like that when I was playing football in goal. You know, you, you can be a hero or a zero playing in goal, right? And I, I think, I think actually, when my my I think my parents and my nan and my granddad came and watched me one time, which normally would, um, you know, there's a lot of pressure on you. Um, I think which I had and I had a really good actually. There's that one, and playing at West Ham. So I got the chance after the end of the season. The, the 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 clubs rent their, the ground out and you can play a game and, and one of the banks had got uh, it was a West Ham supporter in the old Upton Park and we got to play there under under floodlight proper referees home and away kits and change rooms and I had an absolute blinder of a game and goal honestly you know, free kicks over the bar just, just saving everything and um, yeah that that actually yeah that that it, those two were the were the, were the best. Yeah. I, I did that as well, actually, played at Upton Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I scored. I scored. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I missed the sitter straight afterwards, so I, I always think of that. But it was, yeah, I think it was like 
think it was just before they were moving ground. So yeah, they yeah. were renting that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, uh, but the, the funny thing with these kind of games, you, you get especially with, there's a whole bunch of banking people, uh, various levels of fitness. But the funniest moment was when one of the guys put a foot through ball to someone on the wing and they're running and running and basically they got no fitness and they ended up kind of tumbling over and falling <laughs> flat on their face on the ball. You know, <laughs> to, to levels of um of fitness and ability. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Upton, the old Upton Park was fantastic to it's, it's just so enclosed and great to play at. Yeah. Yeah. Um what shoe do you wear for the race? Adidas Ultra Boost PB. Okay. So I, I looked at this a lot and trying to find, and, and I've, I've got them as a running shoe anyway. And they've got like a Pirelli grip. So they've got enough grip on them, but enough bounce. And uh, so now I have uh, a couple of pairs of, of those. Ones that I, I now keep just for races. So the first time I wore them is in the World, World Championships. I get if you get the one that's a couple of years, um, like the 2020 version, you can pick them up for like 70, 80 pounds, and they're great, absolutely. You know, I, I, they, they work really, really nicely. They just give you that boost running and give you that enough grip, so that works well. I'm not, I'm not back to many people that wear, wear, wear the Adidas, so I have to uh, have a look at those. Yeah, no, I, I, I like them. I, I, they also they're, they're like a sock as well, so the. You're not going to slip out of the things. The, 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 that, that kind of the, the upper is a, a mesh, and it, it's kind of like putting on a, a sock, almost. So it worked. They work really well. So. Cool, cool. All right. Well, this this has been great. Last question: If you're going to put a, a message out to the world on a billboard, what would it say? I think. Oh yeah, one I always say to Lazara and sometimes myself: um, You'll never. Uh, you'll always feel better for going to the gym. You know, and because I said it to her sometimes, you know, you know, she got up and like, she's been up with Santa in the middle of the night, and or I've been up with Santa in the middle of the night. And she's like, oh, God, I'm just going to plan to go to the gym, but she, oh, I feel too tired. So you'll, you'll always feel better for going to the gym, and then you do. And I had it recently actually when I um, oh, I was feeling really ill on a Sunday, and I went to bed. And I, was, I wasn't right necessarily getting up on a Monday, but this is my training day. I need to train. Um, Okay, all right, let's let's go. And and I actually did my, I did a the double simulation of doing the open and the pro. I did it the other way around. Um, I was going to do one simulation and thought, right, okay, well this is the opportunity to actually do both. And it's, especially when you're not feeling hundred percent. And afterwards, I felt great. You know, so I think you know that whole you know, endorphins and cortisol and that, that when you, you you just yeah you just feel for. For me, you just feel better, and it kind of it, mentally, it's a great place to escape, um, and you get a great feeling afterwards. So yeah, yeah, I like it. I've got I've, my, one of mine is like movement creates energy. And like very yeah. rarely, if you're tired or, or you know just lying down or lying in bed, really help improve that yeah. energy. One hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. All right, fantastic. So what's the uh, so you've got you've got Dublin, London, and then World Dublin. Championships. London. I booked up the uh, Vienna for the European okay. Open. So I thought I'd like to. I didn't realize it was open, but I'd, great. Okay, like if I don't do a good time in, in Dublin, I'll I'll try for Vienna. Uh, then if, if Glasgow gets announced, I'll book up for that. I'll definitely come over for Malaga, and then and then the the World Championships. It's a whole thing of not doing too many, isn't it? It's, uh, yeah. yeah. Like you, you, I keep hearing you like your peak like four times, five times a year properly. So it's, and but I like the idea of as someone said recently on one of your podcasts is about you, use some of them as a training, a training run. Once you get over the fact that obviously everyone sees your time, then they're going, okay, well if that wasn't so good. What happened there? And maybe is it, you'd be using it as a training run, but um, it's yeah, try not to do too many. The, the great thing I love with High Rocks actually is that you know, especially over Spartan is that the family can come with us. So, you know, they were here in, in Madrid as well when we're in, uh, we're in there. And, yeah, Lazara wants to go to Nice. <laughs> she, she, she wasn't worried about Manchester. <laughs> she would go, go to Nice. I think mean, Hyrux are quite clever with this drip feed in the announcements. It's like you get your races booked and it's like, 
they announced Malaga yesterday. It's like, and then yeah. like you know, someone like you, okay, Malaga, and then you just waiting for Glasgow. It's, um, and I had so. booked Manchester for for February. Then they announced um, the Europeans in Vienna, like a week or so difference. Like, it's okay, so let's 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 not do Manchester then. Let's go to Vienna. But yeah, they're very good at drip feeding it through, and you can get very caught up booking things, especially because the tickets, especially the UK, go so fast. It's, yeah. I mean, it's amazing to think they come from like what seven hundred people doing the first race in London to seven thousand. It's yeah. and you can see why it's just addictive. addictive. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, well, excited to see what you can do. Thank you for this. Uh, anything else I should have asked? Anything else you want to talk about? No, no, that's great. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. All right, All right. perfect. Well, good luck for the good, good luck for the rest of the season. Great. Cheers, guys. Right. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. Take it. Bye.